Hi everyone, so this is Lizzie from with the Love from Lizzie April 2017 card kit, 10 cards, 1 kit video. Um, in this video I'm just going to run you through as many different kind of ideas as possible with uh, the kit, just to give you some inspiration and ideas. So I split all 5 of my card bases lengthways, which is just over 4 inches wide, and then I'm folding them in half and then using my Teflon bone folder to get a nice good crisp fold. Okay, so diving straight in with card one. I drew with a pencil around my card base on the back of a piece of patterns paper and then with my scissors cut it out. You'll see a lot of me doing this with um, the 8x8 card um, paper, sorry, because I, um, I just don't like to waste it. And when you use your trimmer, it's fantastic for 6x6 papers, but I just i am reluctant to waste any of the uh, pretty papers. <laughs> Okay, so I've just stuck that down with my broad tipped Nouveau glue pen and I've turned it over to the reverse to just trim off using a large pair of scissors as I'm less likely to get the edges crooked that way. So yeah, using the, back, the actual card blank as um, a guideline as to where to cut to make sure that I don't end up with any of the card base showing in the front. So now I have my card base with a backer on it and I'm using um, a Mama Elephant circle die I do use a couple of different die sets in this um, video. I do try to keep it to very basic dies though, so that um, if you're wanting to replicate, um, that hopefully you'll have something similar in your stash. Here I'm cutting just um, a short piece of um, the striped paper, just to create sort of like a little banner across the front of the card. Using the Nouveau broad tip again, just to um, fix that down right onto the front. And then here I'm using these peel-offs. Now these peel-offs look like stitching, and this is sort of like the blanket stitch. I'm not sure if that's actually what it's called, but um, I think that I think it's so very cute. Um, and I'm not sure that the camera really picks it up well enough, which is a shame. But um, it looks like it's been sort of stitched onto there as a result. But these peel-offs, if um, because obviously they're made in the UK, they are exactly half of the width of a card. So it's like a handy, handy little tip. As long as you lay them down carefully, you will get two widths of a card from each strip of the peel off. And here I've just chosen a sticker from the from the sticker sheet that's in the kit. And I'm just using my EK Success powder tool to neutralise the stick on it because I want to 3D mount it. And if you leave um, the sticky on the back, then if you post it, then potentially the stick from the sticker could attach onto the card. So it could make it crooked or and you just you just don't want to run the risk. So I've popped a little bit of foam tape on the back of that little tab and using my tweezers so that I can keep my sausage fingers out of the way. I have um, I've seen where I want to place it and I've just popped it down on the front there. So here I'm using um, the silver mirror and I've snipped a little piece and then die cut the bunny using the die from the kit. And then using my foam tape here, I'm just making sure that all the little bits and pieces like the face and the ears and the tail are all very well supported to make sure that when, um, if this does go in the post, as I do intend for this particular card, that it doesn't crush down at all and maintains its shape well. So there, popping that in the little aperture that I made with the circle die and then popping some glue. Now I did actually go back afterwards and use some Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish to attach the little cotton tail because I wanted it to stand up to the uh, the test of being posted so that's the first card all finished. Here's the second card and I had an idea for this and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to explain it very well so bear with me but I used the um, spring die to create um, sort of a panel cut right down the front of the centre of the card and then I lined it up on either side and butted it up again at the bottom so that, and there were some little pieces where I didn't lay it perfectly um, and now this is the inside of the card I've covered it in some double sided tape now it was a little bit wide there but um, I just trimmed it and then folded it back on itself and now I'm laying some patterned paper on the inside of the card using my bone folder to make sure that the fold is really good I just give it a real good push down and now using the edge of the card I'm cutting the paper around the edge so now that is my card front 
So it's, it's a little bit unusual, I suppose. And then I cut Spring from the Silver Mirror, and I'm using my Nouveau Drops here. And there is no rhyme or reason. All I'm doing is putting a dot in between the points, if that makes sense. So they're not perfect, they're just put on there. And then I'm 3D um, foam mounting the Spring Sentiment. And then bit very carefully, because the Nouveau Drops are still wet, I just place that towards the bottom right hand corner of the card. So that's card number two. Here's card number three. And again, um, here I am with my pencil and then I'll cut that with my scissors just, um, just to save the paper. And now I've stuck a little sticker on some of the silver foil card and um, I fussy cut around it, not too fussy, I haven't gone crazy, just to leave it with a nice little border and give it some contrast to the backing, because they're quite similar colours. And using um, a smaller circle die from the same Mama Elephant set, I cut three circles out, and I did try to place them so that they weren't too regular, but I did lay the sticker on the front beforehand, just to make sure I had the right spacing. And then I've covered the back in foam tape, now this is tricky because obviously I've taken all the backing off here because I like to do things the most difficult way possible. Now what you do is you line up the bottom and stick that lightly and then twist it on its side and then line the side up. And using the craft mat makes it much easier. And then I've just gone round and trimmed the edges. And then using multi-medium in the matte finish I've taken three of the little wooden shapes from within the kit and I'm just attaching those into the centres of the circle and again I'm using my tweezer just so that I actually have the freedom to see where I'm placing them and I'm sure that other glues would be fine for this it's just that when it's not paper to paper or card to paper I do like to use the multimedium because I do know that it gives that extra firm hold so they're all stuck down and now I have my clear Zig Wink of Stella brush, I had to think about that there, and I just covered the top of the, all of the wood charms, and now I'm going over the top with some Ranger Glossy Accents, just to give them some nice shine, and I foam mounted the little sentiment up, and that's the end of card three. So here's card four. Now, the, this, um, this little packet is designed to be bunting, and I'm sure um, there's plenty of bunting cards out there and I'm sure I've made plenty of bunting cards so I wanted to try and suggest something different. So here I've just grabbed a few of them in the different shapes within the bag um, and I'm trying to randomly as I can lay them down um, whilst keeping the same shape. So the, the top, the, the large pinked ones and then the middle row I've got a straight edge and then the bottom ones I've got a pinked edge again. So here I'm just gluing them down with my Nouveau medium tip. And I do um, pop up I think perhaps three of the triangles on foam tape just for a little variation. So there's one there. But I try not to do them in the centre because when they're in the middle of the card it can look as though um, you're trying to be very regular and as this card, the, although the lines are straight, they're at an angle. I did try to keep it as random as possible but that does not come naturally to me. I do really enjoy having things in straight lines and where they should be. <laughs> so anyway, I've finished gluing them all down and I've turned the card over onto its reverse and I've trimmed off the little pieces that were hanging over the edge. And here I'm just picking a little sentiment from the sticker sheet and I'm using some of the yellow twine from the kit and I just wrap that around the card twice on the angle as well and then I put some extra multimedium on the matte finish on the back of the sticker just because I'm going to be sticking it on top of the um, twine so I wanted to make sure it did have a good firm hold. So I fuss around a little bit but I do get there and then I stick it over the join just so that on the inside of the card as well it looks nice and tidy. And then I just pop a little bit of glue in on either end of the twine there, just to keep it still, because it's not at its tightest possible angle. And so on to the next card here, I'm using my little, the little egg, plain egg, 
and I stamp that out a series of time onto um, lots of different patterned papers but all of the patterns that I use are small patterns so I'm not using anything that's got too large a print that would get lost on the egg and then I fussy cut them out which is very nice and simple and then I'm using my a dis distress marker here but you can use any black pen but I do recommend that you hold the pen to the side that hasn't got the pattern in case your pen jerks so here um, I'm carrying on with the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink and I'm just laying the Easter sentiment which is what will be remaining there and stamping eggs and the egg just, just twisting it round and round so that it doesn't look too routine a pattern and here I'm using the, um, a little sheet of grid to line up the Easter to make sure that it's straight because after all the work of stamping the background it's really upsetting when you get the sentiment wrong and it's also why I use the Misty and I, I inked it up a few times to be honest it was probably fine after the second but I don't think you can ever have too many and then using the Nouveau tip in the medium I filled in all the eggs and then laid on the patterns trying not to have two of the patterns side by side and then turned over to the reverse and trimmed off the bits of the egg that were hanging over then using the Nouveau drops that came in the kit I carefully, it doesn't look like it because this is sped up to three times the speed um, I carefully sort of filled in the Easter and because the drops have got such a fine tip this wasn't actually anywhere near as difficult as I thought it may be which is always pleading so um, and the colour of the Nouveau drops matches beautifully with the papers so it worked well and then I just went around and randomly spotted the dots in the background and so that's the end of this card now on to card six and here um, I have cheated and added a little bit of white card stock for a couple of these cards and this is one of them um, and I'm using the grid to line up four of the other eggs onto the front slightly towards the top and again using the intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp I ink up the eggs and then I've gone through um, using my Sandy Ornick um, colour chart um, and I held up that sheet of pattern paper next to it and I pulled um, some of my Copic markers in the coordinating colours now I would have left it on there but all I did was colour it in, there was no shading, I didn't do anything at all, I quite simply filled in the eggs with the colour. So, And there are still shots of all the cards at the end as always so you can have a better look at them. And so here I'm just cutting the piece of um, patterned paper so I can call it, call, put a panel on and it also ties all the colours to it. I've wrapped a piece of baker's twine and ribbon around the centre and here I'm just popping some foam behind and I'm not putting the foam over where the ribbon and the twine are so to leave them a little bit of space for um, the sticking as it were so that there's not a lump. I'm not sure if that was explained very well either. <laughs> I know what I mean though. <laughs> and um, I much prefer when tying a bow to um, actually stick the ribbon down and then tie a bow around the ribbon. I find bows much easier to tie than when you're trying to actually connect the two pieces of um, the two ends together in a bow. So there's my little bow and then I just remove the backing of the foam tape here and pop it up onto the front of the card. And then, as you can see, there is the, the Copic markers do come through the, the cardstock ever so slightly, which was why I wanted to do this on a separate panel rather than straight onto the card front. But then I do stick that down flat to the front so it's white on white, which I think is very nice and clean when you've got so many colours on the eggs. And that's the end of that card. So here's card seven. Card seven, I had an idea in mind and it actually went completely off course. So you have to bear with me, I'm afraid. But I'm using the plain egg again, using the intense black ink, and that's um, my lawn fawn stamp chamois, which is lovely. 
I always used to use baby wipes and I'm completely converted now. So, and here I have the feet. Now, I didn't um, pre-treat any of these stamps, which is why the, um, the Misty is such a great tool for this. And now I've got the Easter. And I'm just, I've just placed that in the centre underneath. And on the note of the Misty, I'm really pleased to hear that um, my sweet Petunia has um, been successful with her claim. It's nice to hear that the little man has done well. <laughs> and I, as you can see here, I had one um, wanted to draw a chick, but I just changed my mind. I used the wrong pen. And so rather than throwing it away and starting all over, I just um, stamped the plain egg again onto some of the pattern paper and using um, my scissors, fussy cut it out, went around the edge just to hide those white raw edges and then stuck it in the middle and because I'd obviously stamped it on the card base it gives it a nice edged finish and using two of my Copic markers um, I do a little bit of shading here on the feet but ever such a small amount um, and I will list all of the, um, the colours of the pens that I use and all other products um, over on my blog that will follow in the coming days but I colour in the little feet and then as it had worked so well on the previous card I used my Nuvo drops to fill in Easter and my camera did stop recording unfortunately so all I did was wrap some twine around the bottom and then mount that up onto a card but um, you'll see a still shot at the end so here you've seen me use a small stitched rectangle that's from Lawn Fawn and cut some white card and then I cut the bunny from the centre of that white card square and then here I've used a larger stitched rectangle um, square apologies and cut out some of the purple patterned paper and here I'm foam mounting now the square which has had the bunny removed. I take off all of the little backing squares and then using my tweezers place that into the centre. Now here I've put this into super slow motion because this is how I tie a bow if I'm not tying it onto anything and that is I make two loops and then I twist them around and create a loop at the bottom and poke the loop through the top and then just pull and I don't pull it too hard so that I can readjust it without it creasing the ribbon too much so you'll see me fuss around here for a little while because I, have, I am quite particular about my bows but I am by no stretch an expert so here we are back up to normal speed again now which is as for the rest of the video is three times the usual speed and then I just trim the tails of the, the ribbon and then try to decide which way up I want the bow to sit. Opt for, opt for what I thought I would use as the back as the front. Pop some multi-medium in the matte finish and just pop it directly under the bunny. And then using um, a Kaiser black glitter pen, I just hand wrote baby with a little heart. Because obviously I do have a baby stamp but I am trying to keep the supplies as minimal as possible it's not bedtime darling okay and so here I'm using one of the leftover circles from an earlier card and I've popped some foam tape up onto the back of it and then here I'm using one of the different um, one of the different the peel offs and I'm using um, a blue Copic marker to colour the peel off in and I do put two layers on it but this is the same blue as is the sticker that I've just neutralised with the EK Success Powder tool. And then I pop a little foam tape on the reverse side of the sticker and then I just place it into the middle of that circle. Now, I let, I've let the alcohol marker dry. Now, you must be careful with these now because the straight no, ones, you can be quite... Um, rough isn't the right word, but... You know, you've got a bit of play with them, but these, if you pull them, they will stretch. They're like an accordion. <laughs> so um, be ever so gentle when you're first pulling them up. And when you lay them down, try not to push them down too hard until you're, up here. until you're happy with where they are. I thought I'd get away with a, with a voiceover here. 
without any interruption. I was so close. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. So um, I've just used the tail that was left over and just laid that on at the side and then taken off the backing from the circle, using my tweezers, placed that down. And the sentiment actually says, bloom where you're planted. So I thought that little row of um, flowers was very sweet to have. And here I'm using um, Nuvo drops in um, like an iridescent glitter, just um, in, just in a random spray from the top left to the bottom right. And that's the end of card nine. So here's card ten. Now this is quite a long card, I'm afraid, but I had this in mind when I first put the kit together, and I thought well, I'm not going to do it because I won't fit it in my video, but I'm going anyway. I use glossy accents over the butterfly. And then I have laid some clear thread within the glossy accents and I've set that to one side to let it dry. And here I am using my favourite of the pattern papers which I was tempted to hoard but instead I have decided to use. And again using a pencil just marked over about three quarters of the card. Use the pencil line, cut it out with my scissors and then um, using the broad tip Nuvo pen stick it onto the front of the card. Give it a nice firm press down and then cover, coat the bottom portion as well with Nuvo and then I also put a little bit on the top of the patterned paper. Now using my grid mat I line it up to make sure that the lines are straight and now this way there is quite literally zero waste because it's just cutting it around the card front. Now here this is a handy tip for using these non-stretchy peel-offs. Um, if you lay the card where you want the peel off to go and then you just pull the peel off back over to where it naturally wants to lay then um, you're going to be able to get it pretty much in the right place. So I've just popped that down and here I've used the same circle die that I used earlier and I've just cut through the patterned paper and the card base um, with my die cutting machine and here I'm just doing another square, this is that small square again and I'm cutting the circle from the center of the square and I pop three little drops in the new bow on the front and a tiny little sentiment sticker in the center saying hello spring. Now this is a, t this is a while later where the glossy accents has actually dried on the butterfly and because I laid the, um, the clear thread in whilst it was drying that's now fixed in there. So I've opened the card up and I've laid the butterfly with the glossy accents and the thread facing me and I'm popping two little bits of double sided tape which in hindsight I should have narrow, made more narrow to start with. Then using my grid mat I've got the butterfly in the centre of the circle, take the backing off the double sided tape and then lay the thread into that double sided tape. Now, had I have um, thought ahead and cut my um, tape beforehand, I wouldn't have had to do this. But all I did was a score line in the tape, and then it just sort of peeled out. So it, it wasn't a problem, but it's just easier if you want to replicate these cards to do, so, to do the snipping first. And then you, with the, the stitched square and circle pit panel that I cut, just pop some Nuvo with the medium tip on the back, and then just covered over the threads and the sellotape. So it just looks a little bit finished on the inside. And then I popped some glossy accents on what is the front of the butterfly now and I set that off to dry. And there is my tenth card. So I really hope that uh, you like these cards. This is what I've got left over from the kit. There's obviously the Nuvo drops. There is a strip of ribbon. I didn't even touch the raff, which was a bit of a letdown, or the pen. I put the pen in thinking that you could do lovely stitching lines with it, and of course didn't do that on any of my cards. Um, there's still plenty of the little bunting, there's still the wooden snail, four pegs I didn't use, four of the tails I didn't use. These are some leftover pieces of die cutting that I have, and um, I can probably use in another project. Obviously you've got your dies, you've got your full size stamp set, ready for next year or for more cards and there's still I would say at least two thirds of the stickers left if not more. Um, there's the majority of the peel-offs, I only used three strips 
a lot of the silver mirror card remains. And I didn't use a whole sheet of the patterned paper, so there's still plenty here that I've only had small portions cut from. And then there is five complete sheets that I didn't touch. And so here's the additional products and tools. So there's um, the trimmer, the misty. I did use an extra sheet of cardstock. Um, my lawn fawn stamp chamois. My Fiskars precision tool. Um, two different size Nouveau glue pens. My EK success powder tool. Double sided sellotape some foam tape, my large scissors, some little foam squares, my Teflon bone folder, my non-stick scissors, my tweezers, the multi-medium and the matte finish, the glossy accents, Pencil, the Nuvo Drops, the Black Glitter Gel Pen and the Clear Wink of Stella, the Distress Marker in Black Soot and then there's a selection of the Copics and again I just use ones that match to the pattern paper so whatever you have if you have Spectrum Noir or something else would be great. Intense Black Ink by Simon Says Stamp and Acrylic Block a little pencil eraser and then these are the four additional dies I use I use two circle and two square with stitched finishes to them so um, here are the still shots of all the cards I really do hope you've enjoyed this video thanks for sticking with me till the end um, a couple of updates um, there are still card kits available in the shop um, they will they will be there obviously until they sell out um, so here we are, um, they're not in the same order that I made the cards I'm afraid, sorry guys. <laughs> um, I've um, got some new video software and so I'm trying to sort out the voiceover and get everything looking half decent at least. Um, something that I did want to mention briefly is in the shop there is um, a shipping option now called Card Kit Subscriber Add-on Only and it's £6.50 and it's for those people that have subscribed to the card kit and that pay their shipping monthly and if they want to make additional purchases that they're not charged um, extra shipping again £6.50 I'm afraid isn't even half of what I pay to ship your kits over so please don't select that unless you are a card kit subscriber because I'll have to follow it up with an email and we'll have to work a way of getting that additional shipping across to me so um, I hope that makes sense and any questions do let me know but I will update the shop and the blog with um, posts shortly. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me. Take care, happy paper crafting. Thanks, bye.